Grape vines are an amazing thing to grow in your foodscape. Uh, they grow incredibly fast, they're very ornamental, uh, and they produce a lot of fruit, especially when you uh, prune them and manage them. They are versatile in the foodscape too. You can grow them on an arbor, you can grow them on a trellis. Um, these grape vines are going into their fifth year, and last year, uh, at our harvest time in around August, uh, we got enough grapes, fresh grapes, to eat for about four weeks. Uh, and then we made raisins that we're still eating now in March. We made a lot of raisins. And then we made jelly, uh, enough jelly to give to all of our friends. So in this video, uh, we're gonna show you uh, how to build a simple trellis, how to prune a young vine to train it to a trellis, and then uh, a look at some of these more mature vines and how you would prune them once they're established on a trellis. <laughs> Okay, so to build our trellis, uh, we're gonna use four by four redwood posts. And these ones are spaced seven feet apart. I got two of them in, and we'll show, show you how we put one in here in a second. Um, the spacing can vary anywhere from six to 10 feet on these. Grapevines can fill the space or you can prune them back. Um, so supplies, like I said, they're four by four redwood posts and they're eight feet tall. Uh, and we're gonna go uh, 30 inches into the ground, which means about five and a half feet will be sticking up. Um, and then to do the wire, we have three eighths uh, inch eye hooks and a three eighths uh, inch turnbuckle. And then we're gonna use nine gauge wire on the top wire really thick that might be a little bit overkill um, for these on the trellis we're gonna do two wires one on the top and then one at about waist height that one I think we'll just use 12 gauge wire um, so let's show you how we start digging the hole <laughs> So I already measured these out and here's the spot where we want to dig the hole. So I, you just take a post hole digger and now is really the best time to do it because it's mid-March and here in Utah the soil is still nice and soft. I like to use like the plastic to put the soil on so it doesn't make a mess, makes it easier to clean up. There's going to be a little bit extra. Okay, so we got our hole dug. It's about 31 inches right now, uh, and we left a little bit of room because we're gonna put some gravel in the bottom. So it's important to make sure it's tamped down really well on the bottom. I just use the post to do that. And then also, before I fill it with dirt at all, backfill it, I, want, I like to make sure that the post is level and the hole is big enough to make sure it's level and still have plenty of room on the round the outside. Um, we fill these posts just with our native soil, gravel on the bottom and then native soil. A lot of people would prefer to use concrete in the bottom and that's fine too. Here in Utah, there's enough clay in our soil that it actually makes it uh, pretty firm as long as you pack it in really well as you go. So we're gonna put some gravel in and then start packing it in and, and get it done. Okay, so we got our hole almost full um, and we'll show you how we do it. You want to, um, as you're filling the dirt back in, you want to check for level. Make sure you get it level as you're, as you're going. And you also want to make sure as you put it in, almost to the top here, as you're going, you're checking level and you're tamping the whole way up. So we just use the butt of a shovel and tamp it like that. Okay, so here's how we put the eye hooks on. I just like to drill uh, a hole, right kind of where you want to put it. And it's a smaller diameter than the eye hook. You still want these to have plenty to catch on. And then to get it started with my hand. And then you can just take a screwdriver and tighten it up. Okay, so we're gonna we'll take our turnbuckle, we simply put it on here. You want to make sure that it's threaded all the way out uh, before you put the wire on. You twist the wire on here, run it to the other end twist the other wire or the wire on the eye screw on that end 
and then with the threads are all the way out that allows you to tighten it by twisting when you get your uh, new grapevine that you can either purchase it bare root or uh, potted and this one we ordered bare root and planted it last march so it's been in the ground a year now and it's the march of the uh, first winter and we're going to prune it um, in that first year your main goal is basically just to establish this trunk. You want to get the main shoot, or at least a shoot, to the top of your trellis. Um, so this, when we when we planted it, was really small. It was like this big when we, we planted it, bare root in March. And then uh, during the growing season, all we did was pick the most vigorous shoot that came out and uh, prune off all the other shoots that came out from the bottom. And now, um, usually you want to try to catch them before they're about 12 inches. So if you can get them right away, that's great. Um, and remove those during the growing season to make sure that puts all the vigor into your, your main shoot, which becomes the trunk for the vine. So the first season is about getting it to this point. Then in the second season, now we're going to prune it to get it ready to grow onto these wires. So. The idea there is we find our trunk and then cut through a node. I'll show you that here. Here's a node right here. We're going to cut through a node that's a, a, about three inches past the top of our trellis. And then we're going to take everything else off. So let's go ahead and take this out of the way and we'll cut. See if you can get this right through this node. So now we're going to cut everything else off. Helps to have some nice pruners to do this. Nice thing about grapevines is they're really tough. You really don't have to worry about these things too much. They grow vigorously. And cutting all this off is going to stimulate some vigorous growth. And let me go ahead and get, make the rest of these cuts real quick. everything back to the trunk because we don't really want any growth here we want the grapevine to focus its growth now it's going to focus its growth on these two buds since they're at the top so this year during the season this bud will shoot out and we'll grow it along this wire and this bud will grow to this wire Okay, um, a lot of these other buds will probably put out some shoots and we'll try to remove those during the grow growing season as well to help it focus all of its energy into this. But um, this is a fairly vigorous vine and it's a, it's a small area so it'll easily grow to fill this in. Um, so we're not expecting any grapes this year either. We'll take the grapes off during the uh, growing season if it tries to produce any. Uh, but the following year we can, we can take a, a small crop. Okay, so let's say it's June uh, and you want to plant a grapevine and they're all potted and, and leafed out. So you didn't get it in bare root in March or April. Um, you can still plant the grapevine. Uh, these two vines here, we got um, as donations actually. So uh, we got them in June um, and they had already leafed out and put on more than about 12 inches of growth um, on the new growth. So in that case, it's great to just actually let it uh, grow into a plant form for the first year. So we added the trellis this March. We just got done with this, obviously. And um, now this is the growth that we had. So knowing that I wanted a trunk, I just put um, a bamboo stake in to guide this up. So we got lucky where we have enough um, growth that we can go ahead and use this as a trunk. So we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other one. Um, in this case, we're going to use some twisty tie to tie it sort of in the middle. Twisty tie is nice because I can loop it around here so it's tight on the wire. I want it tight on the wire but not necessarily all that tight on the vine because it'll get bigger. So 
So that should hold that okay. I'll tighten it up a little bit later. And just like we did on the last one, we want to cut it out a node that's about three inches past our wire. So we're gonna cut that one right through this node right here. And then, just like on the on the bare root one, we're gonna cut everything else off. So I'll do a couple of those real quick for you. I'm gonna use this as the trunk. So all of this, even back, all the way back to the main uh, trunk here, to the main, you can take that whole thing off. And this one is a big, vigorous one growing out near the ground. We don't want that either. Cut that right there. That one you almost need lock brush for. And then make sure we cut the right one. I'd hate to cut the trunk. And we'll cut right here. And I think that's everything. There you go. Now we got a trunk out of that one too. So we got kind of lucky here where this was a very vigorous vine and one of the shoots was long enough to become the trunk. Um, this one, this one uh, didn't shoot it, put out anything that long and that's okay. It already established its roots. So it'll grow really vigorous this year. But what we're gonna do is cut everything off but about three buds. So I'll just start taking everything back. We can use this as the start of a trunk. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, and then come back to here. Take these off too. So now when this grows, it's gonna grow really vigorously this year, and it'll make it to the top fairly quickly. off and we'll take this off too so we'll probably get three uh, vigorous shoots coming out here maybe four we'll pick the one that looks the most vigorous and we'll take the others off um, for preferably right when we see them but as, as long as they're less than 12 inches when we pull them off Okay, so just like on our bare root uh, vine, where we're, our goal was to get the, tr the trunk established, and then in the next year to grow um, new shoots along the wires, on that one, it's a spur pruned variety, and what we're doing is training cordons. Um, this is similar where we wanna get it here, but here we have two wires, and this is a setup for what's called cane pruning. Um, eventually, you end up choosing canes to go along the wires every year when you prune. And now we'll take a quick look at our arbor where we can show a little bit of how uh, spur pruning works. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at what uh, pruning mature vines looks like. So each year, once you get your cordons established and your trunk established, you're gonna come in the winter, usually March, or you could do February, and take off about 90% of the growth. So I got the this other vine on the other side mostly done, and you can see this is about 90% of the growth. You take off a lot. That's gonna help it produce uh, really good grapes. It's a big difference. If, um, so this one, this is, gives you an idea of what a cordon looks like. So that's what you're trying to establish on your trellis, especially for spur pruning, you want a cordon. Um, the trunk comes up here, and then we were, so we showed the wires going left and right, where when we split the vines and grow them on the wires, you're basically establishing two cordons going both ways like we did here. So these are spurs. So last year, you can get up and take a look at them. Last year, we pruned these back to two buds, uh, each spur, and they th sh sent out these shoots and this shoot. Take a look at it, this one. Looks like I already pruned that. Um, prune that back in that, and then shoot out this shoot and this shoot. Here's another spur. And as you can see, there's lots of new growth. So every year on spur pruning, it's kind of nice. You just come back to the spur. So I'm gonna take this one off. I'm gonna take this one off. And I'm gonna move my spur out a little bit. Count two to three buds. This one, let's go here. You take out a lot of this other stuff too. So on grapevines, really, you just don't wanna be afraid to cut. 
I'll put some more information in the notes on spur pruning and how to do it. The idea is you end up wanting about, um, I'd say about 30 buds. Uh, it depends on the vigor of your vine. Um, uh, Oregon State University has a really good fact sheet that I'll, I'll put a link uh, to the notes. I shoot for about 30, so I'm gonna end up with counting these buds and have about 15 on each cordon. And that gives you an idea. Okay, so thanks for watching Foodscaping Utah and grow your own.